Hello everyone, I'm Sarah Dayan, I'm a principal engineer at Algolia and today I would like to take you on a tour of our Algolia MCP server and show you what you can do with it. So think of it as your personal assistant for all things Algolia. Instead of navigating through dashboards or writing code, you can type what you need in natural language. So whether you want to navigate your account or your apps or search your indices, create new ones, change your settings, visualize and understand your analytics data or even monitor performance and usage, everything is just one prompt away. So let me walk you through how Algolia MCP makes managing your search infrastructure more intuitive and dare I say a bit more enjoyable. So I'm going to get into what Algolia does best, which is searching and indexing. But instead of using my dashboard to do it, I'm going to go and use Claude directly. So let's get in there and we're going to say, find me the top 10 sci-fi movies and index it in a movies index on app personal include ratings and movie posters let's go and so now what Claude is going to do is that it's going to retrieve uh, sci-fi movies for me it's going to compile that uh, into a format that is suitable for Algolia and then it's going to create a movies index. For now, I don't have a movies index and it's going to index that data directly for me. So I don't have to fiddle with the dashboard. I don't have to write code myself and hopefully it's going to include the information that I want, which is ratings and movie posters. So you can see that right now it got my applications because it needed to match the name of my app, which is personal with its app ID. It was able to see that there was no movies index, so it's going to create one. And now uh, it is adding, uh, it is adding objects. So it's adding, okay, we see Blade Runner, we see your director, genre, uh, we see rating, we see a description, and we do see a movie poster. So that's pretty interesting that it's doing that. Also, what I see right now is that without me asking, uh, because I asked to set, um, uh, like to add ratings, etc. It's also adding attributes for faceting for me. It's adding the attributes that can be then used as filters and facets. I can also see that it's adding custom ranking because I have a rating attribute. So it's smart enough to know that because this is Algolia, I'm probably going to be interested that it sets up all of that for me. So now, it's done that. Uh, it checked whether the movies index was properly working with the search. Uh, and it can tell me, okay, I've successfully created a movies index in your personal Algolia application with the top 10 sci-fi movies. Uh, it tells me all of the steps that it followed. Uh, it gives me, okay, an idea of the, of the attributes that it added, the facets, the custom ranking, and it gives me the top 10 sci-fi movies that it indexed, which is ranked by IMDb rating. So that's really cool. I have Inception, Matrix, Interstellar, etc. All things that are very relevant. So that's pretty cool. We want to check whether it worked. So I could go on my dashboard, which is uh, what I'm going to do, but I'm going to just perform a search because this is also something that I can do. And I'm going to say, search for matrix, just that. And we'll see what it's going to return. So search for matrix. I'm not, I don't need to specify what is the index. It knows it based on context and it's just performing a search request. So you can look at the search request. It looked for uh, in the movies index with the query matrix. And now I have exactly my answer, which is pretty, pretty relevant. Uh, thanks, thanks Algolia for that. So we can actually go there on my, uh, my index. I'm going just to, to refresh on my dashboard, just so that we can see 
the newly created movies index. All right. And so here you can see, you do have 10 records. You have the movie poster, which has been detected by the dashboard as the image to display. We have our directors, we have our genres, we have the ratings, we have the years. So that, that's really awesome. Uh, so maybe we can perform maybe more complex searches. We're going to say, um, show me, oh, search for movies by the Vakovskis. Just the Vakovskis, and we'll see if it's able to do something like that. So it's making a query, and the query might not work uh, because there are no movies like that. Oh yeah, so it was able to return to return that just based on the query. Uh, it could also have done it based on the facets. So there is no, not a facet called the Vakovskis, but it could have inferred that uh, based on the data that it already knew. Maybe we can do it a little bit differently. We can say search for movies by Christopher Nolan. All right, it's still able to do it with a query because obviously those are uh, searchable attributes. Now we could say, if we want to do it by facets, we could say, um, because we have the years, so we have, okay, so we have movies based on the years, we can say, show me movies before year 2010. Right, and now it's doing it with filters, which is why facets are really interesting here because it knows that there is a, a, a year facet, and so it's able to say, I want to filter by year below 2010. And so this is how I get all the movies that were done before that very date. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty interesting that we are able to formulate queries, to formulate indexing uh, operations and to formulate queries, not with code, not with UI, but with just sentences, ju just the way we feel it. So what's really interesting about that is that what used to be very technical operations become conversations. And it really makes it available, not only to your developers, but also to your entire team who wants to understand and play with Algolia and query information about Algolia. All of that becomes accessible just with language. So Angolia provides you with a ton of really insightful analytics to understand your users and how they interact with your search. And this is where Algolia MCP and Cloud come in really handy, is that because they are able to take that complex information and turn it into clear visualizations. So this is what we are going to try right now. We're going to ask it, uh, what is the no results rate? for index products in app wall E for the DE region, generate a graph using React and recharts. Okay, so here what we're doing is a little bit different because we're not only asking Claude to retrieve information. It could, we know it can already do that, it can uh, use the right tools and retrieve information and just say it as text. But that's not really practical for an, uh, analytics because uh, analytics data is usually quite big and messy. So you don't want to read text. You don't want to visually parse JSON. What actually makes sense is a visualization. So here we are asking specific something very specific and we are instructing Claude to show it to us using a specific format. And this is going to leverage something that Cloud does really well called interactive artifacts. So right now it was able to retrieve the information that I asked for, and it is writing React code using also the Recharts library, and it is generating a graph uh, that, so I have the, I have the code, uh, Cloud is really 
good at generating code, but what it's also able to do is to execute that code directly in Cloud Desktop. So right now it's writing that code, and now we also have a graph uh, using React, using ReCharts, that is giving us insight visually into our no results rate. So finally, let's check on the health and the performance of our uh, Algolia application. Uh, we'll start by checking that Algolia is up and running. We can ask, are there any ongoing incidents at Algolia? So if maybe something is wrong right now with your implementation and you're wondering, is there something happening at Algolia? Is my cluster down? Well, you can just add that to Claude. You don't uh, necessarily have to go on the status page of Algolia. You can just ask and get the, the response in seconds and telling you, okay, there are no ongoing incidents at Algolia. You also have a summary of recent incidents that might have uh, impacted you, what clusters they are on, etc. Now, you may want to get information on health or performance for a specific index. So I would want, for example, to know the latency of one of my, of my indices. So I can ask, what's the latency of my products index on app wall E? So right now, I'm going to check whether my products index is doing well in terms of latency. That's something that you may be wondering about, but instead of trying to find that information somewhere, maybe on the dashboard, or even trying to test your own site, maybe you're trying to know from your own site, you don't necessarily want to go and check the network requests, or you're, or you're not confident that this is a, an actual good representation of the latency of, the latency of your index, what you can do is just ask Claude for it, ask it with natural language, just say, okay, I want the latency for my products index. Uh, this is the app, this is the index. Please tell me whether uh, the, the latency is good or bad. So right now it found the products index on the Wally app and it's going to make a query and using that query, it's going to be able to retrieve the latency information. And here's what it found. The current latency metrics for your products index are processing time, 58 milliseconds, server time, 60 milliseconds, total round trip time, over 900 milliseconds, which is a little bit higher than I would want, but still, I'm, I'm getting that information. So then I'm able to make decisions like, is my site slow because of this or because of that? All right, so that's pretty good. We have a performance and health for Algolia itself, the product, but maybe you want information about your usage, like how much indexing operations or search operations you're spending based on your plan. So you can ask, show me a visualization. This is not actually how you type visualization of my API usage over the past week. All right. So that's also something that you can ask Cloud with the Algolia MCP server. You can ask about your API usage because those are tools that are available. So you have the ability to know whether, like how much you're spending in, in writing operations, so indexing operations, in search operations, in specifically search requests. And what we're doing here, obviously, we love those visualizations. So we are turning it into a graph using interactive artifacts. You don't have to do that, but it, it's always a good way to visualize things, to have a, a better representation. This is code that you can copy. You can actually share it. You can actually publish it for yourself, but this way, we have an idea not only about the health of the app, but also the health of the consumption. And so here you see that you have a pretty nice visual representation of your records operation, query operations, indexing operations, etc. You have total operations, query operations, you can see that like that. So this is really interactive. You have some key statistics here telling you about each of your query operation, indexing operations. You have peak and daily average. And on this side, Cloud gives you an idea of what each of those metrics means. So what is total operation, query operations, etc., etc. So 
this kind of monitoring is really interesting because it, it, it helps you stay ahead of potential issues. It helps you understand how your implementation is performing, but also it helps you keep an eye on usage for, for both monitoring and billing purposes. You saw it, Algolia MCP completely transforms how you interact with your search infrastructure. No matter your role, whether you're a developer looking to bypass UI navigation, a product manager analyzing search metrics, or a marketer studying customer search behavior, Algolia MCP makes Algolia's powerful features accessible to everyone on your team. And there is so much more to explore. Beyond what we've demonstrated here, you can use Algolia MCP to manage Algolia rules, create data pipeline transformations, manage collections, and much more. So we encourage you to dive in, share your feedback, open GitHub issues, or maybe even contribute directly to expand Algolia MCP's capabilities. We are excited to see how you will use Algolia MCP to streamline your workflow and elevate your search experience.